I am your host, the Dharma Guy, and of course you're watching Dharma Time, and as always, I am joined with the Dupe Doctor. What's up, brother? With Hola. Your, you're sipping your tea there. Um, My what? And as always, we're coming to you from WPSN99.com, where we stream solutions, and uh, normally he's got uh, a different background, and the background he typically has, for those of you who watch consistently, is the Now Matters oh, More Foundation. Oh, you oh, see? Well, you can keep beat addiction. That's okay. It's a good message to send to the kids. Oh, here it goes. You just wanted to show off your decking. Is all you wanted to do. <laughs> no, I was, I was, uh, I was speaking at a conference a few minutes ago. What if they so, needed help? So they should have needed to call that number. No, no, I can't. I'm not allowed to advertise that number on there. Oh, okay. On there, that's for a pharmaceutical company, and, and they what won't. Number, uh, what number would that be? Eight three three now matters, son. And why would somebody call that number? to get help if you or a loved one or anything needs help with your problem of addiction behavioral health whatever if you just want to just ask questions about it, 833 now matters there you go we're like professionals and stuff you think all right so let's go ahead and just jump into this man um for those need of you drink water i've been talking like for hours for, yeah um for the for the <laughs> For those of you who've been uh, kind of paying attention to the show and watching for a while, I'm not even going to touch that one. Um, for those of you who are not watching us live on Facebook, there's some comments there that uh, some innuendos I'm going to leave alone. Uh, it is a big deck. And I do want to notice, uh, Jennifer Hughes, welcome. I don't think I've, uh, I've seen you on here before. I'm sure you've been on, but I haven't seen it. So, welcome. Um, anyway, so for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that, that uh, when COVID, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, initially hit, we did uh, numerous shows on it, on both Dharma Time and The Couch Live, actually, which can be mm -hmm. seen on Fridays from 12 to 1, same place. Um, <clears throat> and so we, we kind of took a break for a while. I think him and I were both COVIDed out. Is that how you want to say it? Um, <laughs> we just kind of had enough, man. And, and so we just we wanted to cover other topics to kind of acknowledge that life still goes on, you know? Yeah. Um Having said that, it's been a little while, and there's been some new developments, so I figured now is an appropriate time to at least dip our toes back into the COVID water and let you know what's happening in our neck of the woods. Uh, for those of you who don't know, him and I are both in Florida, uh, Central Florida be, to be exact. He's on the coast, and I'm further inland. I'm in Orlando. He's in New Smyrna Beach. And, uh, man, something has happened, and Florida has exploded as uh, far as the cases. Man. Uh, there was like a, a three or four day period there where it was like 3,000 new cases, 5,000 new cases, 8,900, and then over 9,000. In like a four day span, we had like 40,000 new cases. Right? Um, and I, I, I honestly don't know what the cases have been like yesterday. or what, I, I, I kind of, I'm on a boycott at the moment. Um, and I think that's another <laughs> reason why I wanted to talk about things because I think I'm not alone in that. And that is... It's such a, I'm just, I'm exhausted, you know? I'm kind of exhausted with, with everything that's happening. Um, not necessarily, uh, let me clarify when I say everything. When I yeah. say everything, I mean the political arguments. I yeah. mean the, the police brutality protesters. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the coronavirus stuff. Um, those three things in particular, right? I mean, and there's other things that are happening. Um, and then there's things that are happening as a result of said things. Um, we have like we've already had some pretty ferocious storms come through here. Uh, right. We had some tornadoes downtown, which I don't remember the last time that's happened. I had hail storm here the other day. Dude, I got caught in craziness yesterday at the beach. Yeah, man. Great, so, great picks, though, man, was I, what? I have great picks though. You know, the storm coming, the lightning coming, right? And then uh, you know, but then uh -huh. uh, then it got over my head. And, Dana and I and the dog had a leap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So aside from all that, so the main three things that I, I kind of just I'm tired of at the moment is just that the the protesting slash writing, the yeah. coronavirus stuff, and the politics. Um, I've uh, it's just exhausting, man. It's it's exhausting, and and the thing that I've noticed, um, a couple things I've noticed is, is number one, it seems to have been like, it's almost like sucked the hope out of the air for a lot of people, which is weird. Like I'm not used to seeing our country. Not to get all America on everybody, but normally as American citizens, we're all kind of upbeat, man. We're kind of, we rally the troops, you know, we come together in times of crisis and, and we have this this um, resiliency that uh, um, has stood the test of time. Um, but lately, it really does feel like that's being threatened at the moment. It seems like hope is really hard to find for a lot of people because uh, our leaders, uh, um, and I use that term loosely, um, our leaders are, are relatively ineffective in, in trying to keep us together and calm down. They're, they're so divisive amongst themselves that it boils down to us. And then, um, you, you know, there's just nonstop crises. Um, and then the yeah. ripple effects that those crises are causing, you know, between the food shortages in certain areas. We had the, the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. Um, <laughs> and then right now, obviously we're going to have to start worrying about evictions happening because people aren't paying. Like, it's just, it's just a lot of stuff and it's not, none of them are easy subjects. Um, and I think the sky's a lot of, falling. The sky's yeah, falling. Right? All the time, bro. The and it feels falling. to me like a lot of people are just struggling right now just to kind of like find just some, some, some peace. Right. Um, have you noticed that yourself? Have you come across that? Well, I mean, here's the weird thing. If, if I just go through my community and I go to the beach, which apparently I'm doing something criminal because some people get so freaked out that Dana and I go to the beach. Really? I mean, I, yeah, bro. I mean, people With are like, masks ah. on? Huh? Do you have mask on at the beach or no? I'm not putting no damn mask at the beach. So that would be a no. no. Okay. Is no. that what their problem is or their problem is you being out, period? Oh, the pro- there, there, look, there's people. Look, here's the problem. You can't believe shit anymore. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I always believe stuff anyway, but now more than ever, people are arguing over things that, that, that really we need to be united on. <laughs> you know what you I mean? Think, like, think. shouldn't we all be united whether masks are important or not? Shouldn't we all be united in whether COVID is truly bigger now than it was yesterday? Shouldn't we all be united that black lives actually do matter and that we do need some police reform? I mean, all those things should be normal, but here's what happens. You take a little piece of that, which we're all united in, and then you put, just like a, like like when they try to pass a bill or try to pass a right. law, then they throw in a bunch of other stuff, so you don't like that stuff, so then you argue that stuff, and then, oh, what what do you mean? This person's life doesn't matter. Oh, what do you mean? COVID's not real. What you, and it's like, no, I'm just saying that all that other stuff that you piled onto that, I'm not so sure that's yeah, all true. Yeah. So, so that is what everybody's arguing about. Nobody's really arguing the core of this. Everybody's arguing all the outside shit. Um, some of it. I and, watched, and, uh... and, and, and so that's what gets me because I go to the beach and I'm being safe. I'm, I'm at a distance. I'm not going up. I'm not hugging anybody. It's me, Dane, and the dog. I'm going to the dog beach. So you're at least a leash away from me. And and yet some people are like, oh, you're going to get it because I heard that, that COVID exists on the water for seven days when people <laughs> spit. And I'm thinking, I'm more worried about wow. fish crapping in the water. And then that dude over there that just walked in the water and probably take a piss or who knows what he's doing. I'm more worried about that than yeah. COVID existing on spit. Well, I watched... Uh... The, uh, on a program that I watch where they cover various topics, I actually sit there, and of course it had to be Florida. There was, I guess, down in West Palm, there was like a city council meeting, and they had just a parade of people who were adamantly arguing against wearing face masks, mm-hmm. saying it's their constitutional right to not wear one. And, it, and just, oh man. I agree with you in the sense of we don't know, like, there's so many different. Like, we seem to be, as a society right now, collectively confusing fact with opinion. Right. Like, somebody's perspective right. or opinion is not fact, but we're right. running with it as if it is fact. And the problem right. is, there's varying perspectives and sometimes opposite perspectives. 
And so if we don't agree on some baseline facts, then it, it all just becomes a shouting match and nothing really gets accomplished. Um, right. And I think that's what I'm tired of. That's why I'm, I'm boycotting at the moment because I'm just... <laughs> You're boycotting it? There's just no... There, there's no reason. Like, right? There's no... There's no... Like, our ability to get just the facts, ma'am, mm-hmm. is, is right. gone. Right? I feel... I feel, Trinity, that we have dysfunctional parents. Our, <laughs> yes. Our, our daddy Trump yes. and our mama Biden are arguing. Yes. And, 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 and I'm supposed to pick which one I'm going to go live with. Yeah. That's how I feel. I, yeah. I, I, and there's no right answer no. because I really just like my parents to get along. Exactly. But apparently I got to pick one over the other, which is yeah. ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and everybody's fighting over why daddy's better and why mommy's better. And yeah, I'm calling Biden mommy. And that's not a gender thing. That's not a negative 2020 thing. I don't yeah. know what you make it. But yeah. yeah. Trump is daddy and Biden's mommy, and I'm supposed to like one over the other. And every issue becomes either a daddy issue or mommy yeah, issue. Man. Realistically, and, and, the parents are just dysfunctional. As- yeah, and, and that's kind of where I'm at, man. And, and, but I think a lot of people are. I think it's causing a fatigue, and I think what that's also happening then is that fatigue is creating disdain and, and lack of patience with everybody with everything. I'm seeing more and more. You know, videos popping up of people losing their collective shit, man. When they're out, like out in the streets, just with everybody, um, it's kind of gotten out of hand, man. And, and I'm not going to be foolish enough to say that this has never happened before, because I don't know, man. Uh, but I will what say it's it's, it's never been publicly uh, accessible like it is now, right? Before any outrage or whatever it was was limited to essentially those direct communities for the most part. But in today's world where everybody's got a camera and everybody's got a platform, we, we're literally bombarded with it everywhere we go. And so we see it towards before we might not have been aware of it, I guess. I don't know. But I will say in my lifetime, uh, I've never seen anything like this before where it's just like everywhere you turn, it's just complete chaos. And it's it's not it doesn't. And the sad part is it's probably going to get worse before it gets better because we do have an election coming up in a few months. And oh, I'm sure dude. it's going to get even more divisive around that time. And my, <clears throat> the sad part is I'm afraid that even after the election, I don't think it's going to get any better because nope. if Trump ends up winning, then oh, everybody's going to lose their collective shit even more because they're going to oh. have to address the real true fact that not everybody believes the way they believe. Oh, and then boy. if Trump loses, well, then the Republicans are going to say, okay, we'll see what you've been doing to our guy for the last four years. Well, we're going to do it for years. It's just yep. going to get out of hand. Well, I mean, dude, I mean, come on. Look, look. I have to even address that because let me think for a sec. All right. Okay. We know what Trump is. We've always known what Trump was. Trump is no different now than he was 20 years ago. This guy has been the same for the last 40, 50 years that we've watched him on television. There was no secret. The, that guy that we all saw on TV never was fake or phony. He is who he is. He's right. a narcissist. He's, he's, he's a, 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 an egomaniac. And we knew that. Uh, he's a billionaire. We knew that. And he likes to speak his mind. He likes to have conflict and argue. We knew that. If you've ever listened to Howard Stern, he's been arguing with people forever. Yeah. That's who got voted in. Biden, on the other hand, I wanted to like this guy, man. You were with Obama, man, and I loved Obama. But the more you speak, Biden, oh, hell no. He just sounds like an Alzheimer's patient half the time oh, to me. Dude, unfortunately to me, it just sounds like somebody who's, who, who will say whatever he's got to say for a vote. So yeah. I don't, I, I don't think of leaders as somebody who, you know, whatever, whatever the little people, and when I mean the little people, I mean like smaller groups. Um, in other words, not the masses, but whatever little interest group says something, you go, that that's what I agree with. No, I know the way you voted before, bro. I know the way you used to speak. Yeah. I see, I, I can research that easily, and you can't flip on, you know, on a dime, and then all of a sudden now we're all supposed. To to love you you're you're probably not gonna make it out of the four years man you you you're really not well so i'm really here's what i'm disappointed trinity i want a third parent i just want a third parent <laughs> you want that cool step parent yeah I, yeah I, I want a step parent yeah. i want a step parent i'm like maynard says he wants to be adopted i do too man right. i want to be adopted into a different family because these two we need a third <clears throat> yeah i mean well you know, i you think this would be the year for a lifetime to had a third party system yeah. come up and it didn't happen. Well, this Here, would be the time. We had a, yeah, we had a perfect opportunity to have four years to find a great candidate. That didn't happen. So, I'm, you know, whatever. Well, so 
to, we like to go, this function in, the, in <laughs> yeah. this country, man. We well, love to it. go back to the to the COVID discussion, right? Um, because I think that's the more pressing thing, obviously, because it's it's steadily killing people. And here in, in Florida, our numbers are skyrocketing. Um, it's such a non-easy <laughs> topic, right? Like there are no easy, and and the problem is COVID itself is such a problem, and then the ripple effect from that. Um, yeah. You know, I, I will say that for me personally, and I can only speak for myself. Um, up until probably I'd say a week ago, uh, COVID was always like over there, right? Like I would see it on TV, I would see it on social media. It was always over there. But as of last yeah. week, I'm only one step removed from it now. Two separate people that I know of, somebody they're directly connected to, oh. has now popped positive for COVID. And so now it's 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 coming to me, right? Like I'm seeing it advancing, getting closer and closer. Yeah. And so yeah. it's only a matter of days or time now before somebody I directly know personally is going to say, yeah. "Hey, I got it." Um. Yeah. So like that to me is signs that it is getting worse. It's not this far. Fa- well, no, it's coming. And, you know, it's it's, it's getting well, worse. When you say they pop positive, they pop positive for having it now, or they pop positive that they have. They, they currently end up have like, it right now. They are in, right in quarantine. They've got it. Um, one of them was a client of mine, her, her mother who was in a nursing home has it. So that's obviously comes with its own implications. Um, yeah. so everybody's scared about that. And then another person, uh, my mom's friends with, uh, her son has it. Um, so these are all like one step removed from me. And right. so now, like I said, it's just a matter of time before somebody I know personally is like, Hey man, yeah, I've got it. Um, and like you said, well, Louis, it, it seems logical to think we're all going to get it at some point. Well, but, here's the weird hypocrisy stuff, right? So so we had groups of business people and groups of individuals says, I'm done being quarantined. I'm done being shut down. We need to open up, right? But they were all unmasked and, and they were like sharing space. Yeah. So the other people were going like, hey, go back home. Hey, wear your mask. Keep distance, right? Mm-hmm. Then they lost their damn mind on a different issue and they came out. And not only did they gather in groups, but then they started, some of them, some of them, a lot of them, right? Separate from them, though, started tearing shit up. But they were wearing masks. So (laughs) we say the rioters were wearing masks, so they were socially distancing appropriately. And do we say that the protesters were wearing masks, so they did it appropriately? So do we say that or do we argue it or do we just say... As soon as the bars open, this is what they're saying in Florida. As soon as the bars opened up, everybody popped positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe, just maybe, that's the real issue, man. You open up the clubs and the bars, and next thing you know, everybody's out swapping, well, I, spit and I, I hugging again. I think that's the conundrum we're, we we're in right now, though, right? Like it seems like a lot of the younger individuals, the younger generation, is is guilty of being young, right? Yep. When you're young, you're yep. not thinking long term. You're yep. not thinking diseases and viruses and stuff. Yep. Your your main threat, if you will, is anybody in front of you, like who's going to hit you or, or, or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. If it's not an immediate, you know, tangible threat, ah, whatever, I'll deal with it later. And the problem is when it comes to like STDs or, or cancer or things of that nature, it typically only impacts you. So if you're the one that gets it because you were kind of like not taking necessary precautions, ah, you know what? It sucks for you, bro. That's how a lot of people feel. Uh, whereas with this, um, you know, it's not going to affect you. You're going to bring it home and you're going to kill grandma, you know? And so it's like, it's just an interesting dynamic that's happening at the moment. And then I'm seeing a bunch of stuff on our comments here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that to me is part of the problem. And I'm not singling anybody out, but what I am saying is, like you said earlier, you don't know who to believe, right? There's so many conflicting things. You have some people right. saying it's out of hand and, 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 you know, cover this, cover that, mask work, right. everything else. Right. Then you got the other side saying, no, the masks don't work. It's it's not out of hand. They're fudging the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, like you said, who do you believe? Like, neither one of them, well, like, it's all opinion. And, and they all have their own platforms that are equally right. as, as influential. Well, well, because it says follow the science. Yeah, but, the, dude, I, you can't even follow the science on this. Because no. even the science sounds political. And, it, look, you remember that. One day broccoli is good, one day it's bad. One day carrots are good, one day they're bad. Yeah. Look, science is not always correct when it comes to nutrients, no. right? Or viruses. No. So I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know about all that. But, but here's, here's the weird thing, Trent. I know a 90-year-old woman, 90-year-old woman who was about to get heart surgery, got COVID, 
survived it. 90, Trinity. So, and then, and, and, and matched all the, what, what they said, these are the, the risk people. And she survived it and, and lived through it. So, so it's also possible that if you just so happen to be at the right ER with the right physicians, you might get better as well. I don't, that's the weird thing. We don't know. And that's even bad to say, because then if you're working at a hospital or you're a, a healthcare professional and you have dead people, you'd be like, well, what are you trying to say that I didn't do it? I don't know. I'm yeah. not trying to say that you did bad or that your hospital did bad or that that's yeah. not a good doctor or you're not a good nurse. All I'm saying is we don't know. And because we don't know, I'm damn sure you don't know. Because if you knew, we wouldn't have this continuing and continuing and continuing. Yeah. It can't just be about let's shut down the whole world and all stay home. It can't be that. that. Well, no, and, and I think that that's why I want to have today's show was not only to, to just do an update, essentially, but also huh. I want us to try to address that, right? Like, how do huh. we navigate this world right now? Because at the end of the day, nobody knows, right? And, and I'm seeing all this stuff, but everybody's only yeah. speculating, right? Like. Yeah. I'll do respect to everybody who's commenting right now. I'm not trying to be rude to you guys, but none of you guys are scientists. None of you guys work for the CDC. None of you guys are privileged to anything pertinent to this thing. You're just regurgitating facts that you've seen elsewhere that other people did, and that you don't know if that was politicized or not. And that's the problem we're in is nobody really knows. But well, you do know that Fauci does. Yes, Fauci talk talks out of both way. sides of his hey, mouth. And, and look, there's a lot. I don't. Fauci's just Fauci. Sounds like like like. Somebody who's also always trying to be relevant. He's he trying to play both, both sides, sides of his mouth. He does, man. I, I don't, he is just not a trustworthy individual. Yeah. If anyone should have been fired, you know how Trump is, you know, used to have the show that he would go, you're fired. That's who I would think he would have fired a long time ago. Right. And the only reason he's probably not firing Fauci is because the left would go sick. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Then again, he, that's probably would. <clears throat> him from fire he probably no. would do it because so, of that but i think that we need to, I, th I think that that's what people need at the moment is a way to navigate this skillfully we need truth um, we need real truth well i think that we should rely on the only truth that we do have and that is our perspective i don't have it in our I response don't have it. yeah <laughs> the only truth that we it. have is my respect like, so for me right i've been boycotting the news lately because i just it's all the same i, I literally can I could turn it on any day, any time, any channel. It's going to be exactly the same thing. I can tell you what it's going to be depending on what channel you're watching. And so for me, I'm just trying to navigate things the best I can. I'm trying to be the best I can for my family and for the yeah. people I do interact with. I'm trying to be responsible. I don't know if, if a mask is really going to help or not. But you know what? It's not going to hurt. So when I leave the house and I go into a public space, I try to have the mask on as long as I can, as long as I can wear it because I never know. Um... You know, it's it's not a fight that I'm willing to fight, right? I do a, I do a risk analysis for me, uh, risk reward, right? And so the reward right. I get for not wearing a mask is not worth the potential risk of not wearing it. So I just wear it, man. Like it's yeah. I pick my battles, right? We're yeah. both married, dude. Exactly. Like I, I exactly. learn to figure out when I want to make a stand and when I don't. Right. And so for me, I try to err on the side of common sense, and I think that that is the only way to go, man. Is is I I'm in control of my responses to things, and as Simon said earlier, I'm trying to do no harm. I'm trying Look. not to hurt anybody else or myself. I'm trying to make the best decisions I can. Yeah. I'll let the people who get paid a lot more than me figure out all the details with things. They have right. way more information than I do. Um, right. And I think that that's we collectively what we need to focus on, man, is we need to focus on just let me stay in my lane, right? Like, you know, what Fauci does or doesn't do, I can't fire him. I can't hire him. I can't do anything with him. And so I'm going to let the powers that be figure that out. I'll, I'll speak right. with my vote when it comes time for election, when all these things come out. But in the meantime, I'm not going to allow them to dictate my daily feeling or my daily actions. And I think that's right. kind of where we need to focus. Uh, and it's hard, man. Like, don't get me wrong. It is hard. Even for me. Like, I feel very grounded, bro. Like, I feel very spiritually in touch with myself. However, I've had days, man, where, like... I'm just like, whatever, man. <laughs> it's just everywhere I turn is just nonsense, man. Um, and I've noticed that for me, I've actually, as much as we use social media to to promote and things of that nature, you know, our livelihood is connected to it. I very much have taken a bit of a break, man, because it, uh, it's a rabbit hole. I'm just not interested in going down these days because I can. I can get fired up, right? Like I, I can go and watch something and then I immediately have an opinion because I'm human. Right. And then I want to... That I start getting fired up, and then I talk, and it just creates turmoil. And I think that's a rabbit hole that too many of us are are uh, quick to go down, whether intentionally or not, right? Yeah. You know, if you're not, even if you're not intending on it, you, we all have opinions on things, 
And so if we see something, we're going to have an opinion. And if we voice that opinion, inevitably somebody's going to have an opposite opinion. And then next thing you know, you're 30 mm-hmm. minutes knee deep into an argument that never had to happen in the first place. Right. That, mind you, nothing is going to solve either. Right. No, <laughs> no real legislature or any major change has come from two people commenting in the comment section back and forth. Well, here, here's, here's the sadness. You know, when, uh, remember when Trump was campaigning and he said he was going to go drain the swamp? Uh, yeah. It was our belief that he meant Washington. <laughs> Maybe the truth is that we're all swamp livers. <laughs> we, we're all, we are the swamp. Yeah. Every single one of us live in a swamp. Yeah. And, 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 and we love to point our fingers and we love to blame others and we love to, to, to play the high road. But at the same time, we're all guilty of it because hypocrisy is real. Lack of perspective is real. Emotions are real. Uh, frustration is real. And when you put all these things together, and when people don't have a true understanding of how to end all this madness, the lack of being able to control something is driving every control freak <laughs> completely nutty. Yep. So every single control freak out there has lost their damn mind. Yeah. And so then they get all moody. And then all the people that are kicked back lack of days are going to be like, oh, dude, I just ride it out, are getting attacked for not yep. being more serious about the situation. It's like, yep. so, so what are we supposed to do, Trinity? I mean, it's like, can't we just, can't we just take a pause <laughs> for a second and just stop yep. fighting? Yeah. Just stop fighting. Because... Because that's the problem. We would definitely be able to deal with this situation if our parents, our mommy and our daddy, like I said earlier, <laughs> not fighting each other. Yeah. If they could play well together, we would get this done. But that's so just I, it. Blame, I blame them swamp livers up there in, yeah. in Washington, and I blame everybody that plays in the swamp trying to make this a federal issue when it's really a local issue. This is not a federal thing. Yeah. Right? The only reason we have these higher cases in my county is because everybody started coming again. <laughs> you know, everything opened up on the beach. You know, the bars opened up at the beach, so everybody came from all the towns back to the beach. Yep. And you brought COVID with you. Yep. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, I think, uh, you, you know, I think that right now, individually as well, I think we're starting to realize our own weaknesses, right? There's a thing that you, you're, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually taking from you. I, I've never called it this, but I like the way you phrase it, so I'm, I've stolen it from you now. Um, and that is self-soothing. Um, a lot of us don't seem to, like, we've all felt that we're good self-soothers, but right, I think right, we right. Uh, um, subconsciously re- relied an awful lot on external things and thought yes. that we were self-soothing. Yes. But I think right now, a lot of us are being hit right in the face with our weaknesses, and, and to me, that's a learning uh, a moment, right? It's a teaching moment for us to learn like, hey, wait a minute, maybe I wasn't as good at self-soothing as I thought I was because yeah. there is a very real problem that, that isn't being discussed a lot. I, it, in certain corners it is, but there are so many people struggling right now just to get through the day because they're so isolated, all right? And yeah. they're just not doing good with like PTSD almost, man, of like, right. like my, you know, my own, even my own poor wife, dude, like she's, she is a people person, man. She's much like Dana, dude. She likes to be around people and talk and kind of do her thing. She's that person that goes to the job that everybody loves. That, that <laughs> like, you know, I'm the dude that I clock in, I do my thing, and I go home, right? Yeah. I don't participate in things. I'm not mean to people. I'm just indifferent. I show up, do whatever. It is what it is. She, on the other hand, is, she participates in the Secret Santa thing. She decorates. Like, she is that person, right? Um, and then not that she doesn't love her family, but she's not getting that outlet here because we see yeah. her every day. And so she's struggling to kind of like, what do I do? And then she's one of those people who are high risk. And as much as she's trying to be indifferent about it, she's human, Bruce. So she's scared shitless. Like her doctor literally wrote down on a note to give to her job. She will die <laughs> like because wow. of her high risk. So I don't care who you are. You read that on a paper, it's going to have an impact on you. Um, so meanwhile... Yeah. She's trying to deal with not being able to get her her outlet with friends and stuff like that at work, all the while with this thing looming over her head that you could die at any moment with this invisible thing to get you. 
And so I think that there's so many people right now who are, I think we had, I don't remember, uh, it was on the Couch Live a few weeks ago. Um, the, I don't remember her name for the life of me at the moment. Um, some of you've known for a long time, health coach. Uh, she was saying she's a hugger. She's having a hard time. She doesn't know what to do. Like, I think people are really, truly struggling. And I don't think we're giving that enough attention. I think that I'd be interested to see, not to be morbid, but I'd be interested to see what the suicide rates are going to be. Because I think a lot of people are really struggling and they don't have an outlet. Um, right. and, and all this infighting isn't making things better for them either. Because if they're already struggling and the people that they want to reach out to for companionship are too busy fighting about all these other issues, there's yeah. no time for soothing. So I think that now is a good time for us to focus on some self-soothing. Find ways to where you can soothe yourself a little bit because while, yes, it's great to have friends and family around you that can help in those matters, we're finding out now that they're not always going to be available. They're not right. always going to be emotionally available for you. Um, right. And I think that self-soothing is an art form. Right? I, I think it looks different for different people, but we all have to figure out what that is to, at the end of the day, man, just to be okay. Right? Like, that's what we all want. We just want to be okay. And that yep. looks different for different people, but we, we've come to a point right now where we can't rely on those same external factors that we used to to be okay anymore. Well, that's the thing. It, it, I've never, I've never, I've never relied on the news to make me feel okay. Yeah, I've never I've never relied on our government to make me feel okay. I've <laughs> never relied on them to feel secure. I've never relied on them to raise my kids, to teach me my moral my you know, where I'm supposed to be in morality. I've never counted on them to tell me how to wash my hands. I never <laughs> asked them, you know, how should I leave the bathroom? Should I touch the doorknob or should I use a, a paper towel? I've never needed them for that sure our common sense is, is it's like we want to blame everything on, on on things that are so far removed from your normal common sense it's sure. like everybody needs a snicker bars and a nap Trinity. <laughs> like, like like if everybody's running around hangry and everybody just needs to stop being woke and they just need to go to sleep everybody yeah. just shh, take a nap well dude remember one of our first shows when we did the search uh search terms from a year prior uh, it was a few months ago, and the things that everybody were googling were like how to boil an egg, how to like how to do basic things in our own homes that we didn't even know what to do anymore. It's like yeah. for so long we've been so reliant upon technology and other people, right. like oh somebody else will figure that out. Right? Well, they're not. What, aren't you? I, look, here's here's what I don't like. Look, I I I. This feels like sixty minutes all of a sudden. All of a sudden, hey, I love no, no, the, the guy back in the day. And here's another. Here's I don't oh, like that's that. right. Oh, and and uh, the more to the story or something like that. I don't remember, that, but yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Our older people will know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. The um, you know, it's it's important to respect your elders, right? Sure. So it's, it's important to respect them. Um, we, ha I hate being educated, Trinity. If oh. I if I if I come to you to be educated, I'm good with that. If I go into the situation of the relationship where I know I'm being educated, I'm good with that. What I don't like is everyone sounds like a professor all of a sudden. <laughs> every, every, everybody thinks they are the only person that, that heard the story, yeah. understands the story, or, or has the friend of the friend of the friend that sure. knows the truth. And you need to listen to it because I know. No, my favorite it, phrase is, do your research. Because oh, they, they, they read a Wikipedia article and that qualifies as research now. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I would... It was uh, this, Richard Coleman got it right. It was Paul yeah. Harvey, and that's the rest of the story. Remember this? <laughs> <laughs> Only sign language I know. Yeah, so, the best so, one. Yeah, so, so, listen, I don't need to do my research because I'm going back into, you know, three years ago, before, the, before everybody started wondering if, if this dude can actually beat this girl in a, in a, in a, in a, in a presidency election, I didn't care about elections. I didn't care about politics. Right. Then I started paying attention because I thought it was pretty interesting. We can actually have a female president. And what? That dude's actually running for office? <laughs> I can't believe it. And it became interesting. Then when a whole side lost their damn minds, it became real entertaining. So yeah. I got interested. Then as I got interested, I got concerned, Trinity. And you saw me get concerned here because we never used to talk about politics. For, for how many years did we do our shows? Never, never. talked about politics. But then it got so to the point where, look, man. Are you guys seriously still like arguing and crying and, and moaning about the situation? Grow up. 
Let's stop it. Damn it, man. This is the American system. Vote the other way next time and you're fine. That's just the way it is. Grow, you know, four years from now, there'll be enough. So then I got interested. So they baited me in Trinity. They, they got me. We they got, got me. So then I got in. And when I got in, I'm looking around and going, no, I still think both of you lost your damn minds. The only difference is, is that everybody's always just trying to one up each other on how much information they know <clears throat> and what they know to be correct and right. So you take every issue, Trinity. I mean, right now we could probably do a show on the hurricanes, right? And there's a hurricane going to happen, that, you know, and somebody will blame it on somebody <laughs> that shouldn't get blamed. And, and for some reason, no, no, no. My cousin works for NASA and NASA, if they would be allowed to send up this, if they would be, if they would, <laughs> next thing you know, we'll be arguing hurricane. <laughs> yep. because I fully believe that everyone right now is just so frustrated, needs a nap and needs a Snickers bar that you're arguing everything. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I would be very curious to just know the unfriended numbers. Oh, I wish they got to be astronomical. I wish Zuckerberg would publish unfriended numbers. Yeah. Like the average, un the average person would unfriend this many people. This many people were unfriended in, in 2014. Then this many people in 2018, I would love to know 2020, how many people got unfriended because I'm sure. Yeah. And instead of just swiping away or just looking yeah. away, I'd like to address that like, actually. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> yeah, I want to address that actually real quick. Um, first and foremost, uh, you know, and and I'm trying to come from a spiritual perspective here, so keep that in mind. Um, okay. Number one, the unfriending thing solves nothing. Like that person probably didn't even know you unfriended them. It, it feels like such a kindergarten move. Like I'm taking my ball and I'm going home, you know. Um, but then from a spiritual perspective. Um, Ask yourself why you're unfriending that person. Is it because that person is just no longer viable in your life anymore? Or is it because they had a, 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 a perspective different than your own? Yeah. Right? And, and what I mean by that is, is if you're the type of individual that refuses to have anybody in your orbit unless they 100% agree with you Ooh. or agree with you in a way that you think they should, that's you. That's not them. That's a you problem. Um, you need to look inward and address that because you should be allowed to be hanging around people who differ uh, in opinions than you. That's how we grow. Um, the perfect example for me, right? Had I have only uh, surrounded myself with people who offered me nothing different than what I already had, wow. I would still be an ignorant, pissed off, you know, teenager, essentially. Um, it was because I had older, wiser people with me who told me things that I didn't necessarily agree with. But I respected them, so I listened to them. I completely disagreed with them. I thought they were full of shit. But years later, I realized, like, damn, they were telling me this all along, and I kind of see their point now. Like, they planted those seeds, and they wouldn't have planted those seeds had I just completely cut them out of my life and surrounded myself right. with a bunch of yes men. Now, I'm not saying that you have to agree with everybody who is in your orbit, nor am I saying that you have to spend your time with those people. But... Right. If they're a friend on Facebook, let's say, you're not really spending time with them, are you? You're not inviting them into your home and sit at dinner right. with them. You could just, like he said, scroll past them, right? Like, there's people on my friends list who are constantly baiting arguments. Um, and, and you know what I choose to do? Scroll past them. So friends That's with it. them. I still think they're That's a good it. person. I think that they just, yeah. they're in a point in their life right now where they feel the need to ruffle some feathers and, and do right. something. And that's fine. You know what? Go for it. I'm not going to defriend you because of that. I'm not going to look down upon you. That's where you're at in your journey. Right. So just like I wanted people to love me where I was at on my journey, which was probably to certain individuals a very displeasurable thing, right. um, I respect them and I'm thankful that they did love me where I was at. I'm also thankful for the flip side, right? Like not only did I not cut people out of, their, of my lives, but they didn't cut me out of their life either. Like there's people I know, for instance, we'll just use the, 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 you know, the anecdotal one, marriage, right? How many times did I say on the show, on the couch live for years, how adamantly against marriage I was? Yep. And I wasn't even like non-vocal about it. I was more than happy to discuss my things on it. And you were very pro-marriage. You were very happy in your marriage. Well, what if you would have just cut me out because I didn't agree with you? What if you just be like, you know what? That exactly. dude's anti-marriage. I'm going to cut him out. Because it works both ways, right? It's not just me cutting others out, but they can cut me out. And now, right. look, I'm almost six years deep in my marriage, and this is one of the best things yeah. I've ever done, and I've loved it. And we're still friends. Had had you cut me out because I didn't agree with you, or if I cut you out because you didn't agree with me, where would we be at today? Not here. 
And so that's the thing is, is we got to stop this. Like, if you don't agree with me, my, my sense of being and my sense of morality is so fragile that I can't be around anybody that disagrees with me. We got to stop that. Yeah. If you, if you're not convinced enough in your own way to where you can hear the opinion of somebody else that differs from your own, then maybe that wasn't your opinion to begin with. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to look inward and kind of deal with that. So like this, and, and, by all means, if you want to defend somebody, go for it. But don't convince me that you're better because you did it. Right. That's- yeah, no, I, I agree, man. Look, I saw I saw some people even get frustrated with people that... Remember there was that blackout date where like some people posted the blackout? Uh, yeah. So Actually, I think I, I did that on my... Um, um, I think I did that. Yeah, I didn't do it, but... Um, I didn't change my profile, but I put up... But my it story. doesn't mean I'm racist. I just didn't do it. Yeah, that means uh-huh. you, you, you hate black people is what that means. Yeah, of course. Uh, but but um, uh, I saw somebody actually get mad at me for doing that. Get saying, mad at you? No, get mad at other people. Uh-huh. In other words, saying, if you didn't already believe that way before, if you didn't already do things before, then don't just jump on the battery. Like, even that. Yeah. Like, what I guess what I'm saying is, is that nobody's going to meet you a hundred percent where you're at. I mean, they're going to, uh, like you said, I accepted you as a friend, even though you didn't believe in marriage. If I, but what if, what if I would have took that one issue and that one issue was so big to me and, and I made some lifelong decision that says, I'm only going to be friends with married people or people that respect the sanctity of marriage, people that understand right. marriage. Cause those that don't, are heathens, those that don't, <laughs> are, are polluters of the yeah. earth, the users of women. And, and if I would have made all these different judgments based on that, yep. then we wouldn't have had no. all these years with Trinity, and we would have never had the Dharma guy. And nor would we, would we have collectively touched as many lives as we have. Exactly. So the key, I, I, I love your point right there, and I, and, and I think that's a very serious issue because I've heard people say, you know, oh, I only hang out with married people. I have heard people say that. Yeah. That, you know, I've only hang out. So, so it's not that far off. No. And, and and here's what we've learned now with this COVID update, Trinity. Nothing's far off. No. Because when I first heard about defund police, did you, did you when you first heard defund police, did you not laugh? Yeah. Okay. That was the That's the worst the phrasing now. I've ever heard in my life. But it's a thing now. Yeah. It's it, because certain sides because somebody stepped up in the news and goes, no, you're not understanding we all agree. You need to agree with it too. If you're on this side and you hate the racist, you need to agree with it. Yeah. Trinity, they've all lost their damn mind. They actually believe it and it's happening. Yeah. It's freaking happening. And it's like, wait a minute. Did you not get a giggle when you first heard that? You didn't laugh at it? It's like when I first heard that Trump was running for office. Did you not giggle the first time you heard that? Did you oh, not absolutely. Go- yeah, I didn't buy it at all. Right? Well, and, and, and as it progressed, it got even less believable. That's, but that's what I'm saying. So all the – whatever you could think is outrageous and crazy, that's where we're at. Yeah. That's exactly where we're at. The, the craziest of ideas are now normal. So yeah. I'm now going to find a way to, to funnel money to Elon Musk and take all you to Mars right. so you guys can go. I know you want to go. I know you don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. So I think we need to start – Paying for people to go to Mars. Yeah, and that right there is why I, I knew that, uh, A, I needed to take a step back myself because I was getting caught up in it all, you know, spending, you know, uh, hours looking at videos. And I kind of, like, had to pump the brakes. Like, hold up. You know, I'm not going to allow all this to affect my inner peace because at the end of the day, and I mean this with all due respect to everybody else out in the world, I don't give a shit. I care about my inner peace because without my inner peace, I'm worthless to myself and to everybody else. Right. So at the end of the day, with the, the you know who does this or who does it, it means nothing to me if I don't have my inner peace. So that's my number one goal. And I felt Amen myself that, losing man. some of my inner peace, getting caught up in some of this stuff. So I had to kind of had to pump the brakes. Like, oh, 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 I see what you're doing. You almost got me. Nope. <laughs> let me re- let me go back. Let me get my inner peace back. <clears throat> and um, I think you're laughing at the moment because I'm seeing we're being nominated for president and vice president over here in the comments. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was, I was wondering who was which. <laughs> well, they, they apparently would love us regardless of what we decide. So, yeah. See, I love stirring the pot, Trinity. So, so because I've had, I've, I've been a counselor for so many years, and I had to be like on point for yeah. so many years in that private practice, you know, office, right? 
And I knew people's lives depended on it, and they were hanging on every word I said. So I took myself serious when I was in there to the point where when I'm not there, mm, mm -mm. right? you know, because <laughs> we, we can't even laugh and joke anymore. Humor is gone. Yeah, you man. do. People, that is the real issue. You know that, right? Because as soon as they killed comedy, we should have known that everybody yeah, was going to lose their damn mind. Hell in a handbasket. Kill comedy. Comedy is absolutely necessary to feel good. Well, Simon and just dropped a kill. nugget of wisdom. He said we take our crap to Mars too, <laughs> which, is, which yeah. is funny because yeah. it's true. But you guys can take it to Mars because I'm not going to be there. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. stay right here. Yeah. So they can take it to Mars. You know. Um, I. You know, if we're going to talk update, COVID, here's the COVID update. We are still very unsure of what's happening. Yep. <laughs> we still don't know who to trust. We still don't know the information that we're being given. Is it because it's real or whether it's political? Because that's where we're at today. Yep. We're, we're at a place today where ev since everything is politicized, we, we can't we can't believe not a damn thing. And if you've ever flipped channels in, in Trinity, there, you know I'm a channel <laughs> flipper. Yeah, I, I, I go too. from CNN to Fox, CNN to Fox, CNN to Fox, and, and, and I enjoy bouncing back and forth my god it's like living in two different worlds yeah. the exact i mean i mean yeah. and i both sides are super intelligent super intelligent but both sides are digging in their heels to their base well it's not even not news. side digging into their base it's a tv but show now here here's my here's my thing because we do need a real covid update both left and right both of you guys already have your base you know that, right? Like yeah, the they're right, not going you anywhere. Base, left, you have your base. They're not going anywhere. Can someone please talk to us in the middle? Can someone please rise up <laughs> and create a new news channel just for us in the middle? It's called the adult yeah. channel. <laughs> just a bunch of adults, right? Like, let's just... Warren, Warren is, is the middle? Yeah. <laughs> let's just, can we, uh, just, just the facts, ma'am. I, I miss those days. I'm going to get off on a little my own little tangent here. I miss those yeah, days, dude. I, I, we, I miss the days... I miss the days where they would just show up, give me the who, what, when, why, how, and where, and sign off. And then I was left to decide for myself how I felt about that and what it all meant. And, and nowadays, they don't give us the who, what, why, how, and where. They give us the opinions of what all that meant. And I'm getting so... Like, it, it is, it's frustrating to watch. And I've done the same thing. I've channel searched before. I've gone back and forth most frequently. I get yelled at in this house all the time if I turn on Fox News. Um, because I get told, you know, I defend Trump all the time, and, and, and I don't defend Trump. I just defend reasonability, because um, I think some certain things are circling him are very unreasonable. Uh, do I think he brings some of it down on himself? Of course I do. Uh, yeah. But regardless, and, and there was one not too long ago, I think, that uh, um, I think Trump had a rally or something, and when you look at Fox, it was zoomed in to, to listen to what they were saying, but if you go to CNN, they zoom out so they can show you all the missing seats. And so the same thing, but they're giving off two completely different vibes. Yeah. And then what they also, uh, I guess, neglect to mention, I guess, that some that Japanese band, K-pop or whatever, they, they right. bought out all the seats so nobody could attend or something like that. Like, It's like nobody wants to report the facts. They just want to give their own slant. And I'm, I'm so tired of being told what to think. Just... Give me the facts and let me decide for myself. I will figure out. I'm a smart individual. I will figure out how I feel about that. Right. I promise you. Um, I do it in every other area of my life. I don't have somebody who listens to my wife and interprets it for me. I don't have right. somebody who listens to my kids and interprets it for me. No, they just they tell me. I I respond. Um, right. And so yes, I, I I would love if the because that's what to be honest with you, I think we both are similar. Um, I, I strive on a continuous basis to try to find a neutral news source. Whenever I hear something, I try to go research and say, okay, where's, where's the truth here? Right. Um, and I used to have a set group of places I could go to where I would know I would get the facts, but those are gone nowadays. They're dwindling. Because even the places that used to be politically neutral aren't anymore. Right. Um, and I think that is what's yeah. what part yeah. of what's causing people to struggle is I think we do want a sense of normalcy. I think we do right. want like that set point theory, right? Where we're just kind of like our baseline of happiness. But we're so reliant upon these external sources to give it to us that I think now we're learning that we can't do that anymore. Like we have to be okay with the unknown. We don't know what's going on with COVID and, and that has to be okay. And I think that's a scary proposition for a lot of people because we want to know, but you're just not, unless you're in that circle, you know, unless you're in the laboratory, if you're doing the test, you're not going right. to know. 
because everything you're getting is an interpretation. So I think right. that, like I said earlier in the show, man, I think we're realizing now that we're going to have to get better at self-soothing. We're well, going to have to do it. Go ahead. And also, I mean, everybody keeps comparing us to these other countries that have somehow controlled COVID better. Nobody has. But nobody, nobody's nobody the United States of America. This is the most free. And when I say free, I mean real free. You're allowed to be a jackass here. You're allowed to like yeah. look at reality and go like, nope, that's not true. We are so allowed to do it that they will – even when what happened when Demings the other day says, you know, I'm going to make it mandatory and everybody in Orange County has to wear a mask. Yeah. People lost their damn minds and instantly filed a lawsuit. Yeah. So – we are, in, we are in a world, in a country, not a world, in a country where you can't do that. Here's how it could have been handled. And you, half of you would have lost your damn mind. If he would have said, everybody must stay home, everybody, that you will stay home, I will feed you. The military and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the cops will bring your food to you. Keep your ass home. Martial law. And you'd have tanks running through the streets. You would have lost your damn yeah, mind. There's no way that would have happened. That would have not happened. Okay, so in some countries, that's exactly what freaking happened. Yeah, well, in China, they had little speakers at everybody's door yelling out on the same yeah, side. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so you don't compare. You, you can't compare. They, you're allowed to walk out here, and if you want to be whatever you want to be, you're allowed to do it. I'm it, telling it comes you, with the it, was, it was yesterday I watched this this uh, like a committee meeting or whatever, this counselor or uh, uh, like a city meeting, basically, down in West Palm. And it was on TV, and, and uh, there was just a, a, it's like at least seven or eight people who were all adamantly getting up, and they're little, like, three minutes going off saying how they can't make them wear masks. And this one dude was like, you know, I'm a veteran, and I fought for that flag, and I'm not going to, like, just put the fucking mask on, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. I mean, there's people I know personally who, who have threatened to, like, leave their job or get fired if they're told they have to wear it. Like, really? It's right. not worth it, man. Like, listen to yourself. You're being unreasonable now. We're not asking you to, like, you know, give us your kidney or something. Just put a fucking right. mask on. Like, right. it's not worth the risk, man. I got people in my family that could potentially die from this. Like, do I really want to make my point on wearing a mask that much? Like, is it worth it? And this is where I go back to my whole spiritual thing of you can be right or you can be happy. Yeah, I could, you're right, 100%. At the moment, they don't have the. They can't make me wear a mask. You're right. right. I can walk out the door and not wear a mask. But if I go out and I don't wear a mask, and I catch COVID from somebody, and I bring it home, and both my wife and my mother die, how happy am I going to be for the rest of my life? Am I going to? When people ask me what happened, am I going to be like, oh, let me tell you this, man. Whew, I was so right. I never. No, I'm gonna start out with like, what the hell, man? My my wife and my mom are dead now. I'm not going to be worried about how right I was. Well, here's the problem, though, Trinity. When you have certain people reporting research that actually wearing a mask can actually get you more sick or can get you sick, because if you continue to use it and it moistens up the inside, and then you touch it with your hands and you touch it, you just put it on the inside. And that's how you I mean, Trinity, the problem and is. That's why I've taken a boycott. It, what, what, exactly. <laughs> and here's that's the problem. Why I've stepped away. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. And I'm going to break it down as simple as I can. We live in a world where we've been told for generations, boys and girls, this is a condom. This is how you put the condom on, and this prevents babies Man, and sexually transmitted is, diseases. Yeah. And there's individuals out there that go, nah, I ain't wearing a condom. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like the way it feels. It's not real. I'm not going... There's people out there, Trinity, they, 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 they have, have promised themselves, sworn themselves, and, and argued this to not do it. And therefore, what do we have? We have a lot of unplanned this, unplanned this. Oh, oh, got a bug. Oh, oh, got a little bug over here. Yeah. And, and right, we've had that. Yet, we've never had the government step in and says, you mandatory. Right. Con. Right? That right. would be outrageous. Yeah. Yet, that probably would solve a lot of problems. <laughs> if they follow it, yeah. So now, this is what they're saying. This is what it sounds like to, to me. To me, they're now saying everybody must work out. Now, me? Okay, I'm going to wear whatever. I, sure. Brother, I wish they had, like, you know, 
uh, hopeful we'll body <laughs> yeah. condom for me to go outside because I would I'm gonna be safe no matter what. It's just not worth so, it for me because yeah. it's gonna make me feel better. It's yeah. gonna make me feel more safe. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it really will prevent anything, but I do know that if I feel like it's preventing it, then I feel better. Sure. And so I will do whatever I need to do to, to decrease the risk factors uh, of getting this, passing it on to my kids, passing it on to someone like yourself. You know, I don't I don't want to pass it to you or your family and I don't want to get, you know, be the reason that your wife gets sick and dies. You know, what I mean, yeah, that'd be because um, if I'm going to be the reason of anybody's death, I want the enjoyment of actually committing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. want to be doing it. And, you know, that's like getting. That's like being a codependent person. Like the drunk and <laughs> yeah. addict get high, but at least they get the high before the crash. Right. The codependent people, they just get the crash. They never even get the high. <laughs> so screw that noise. You know. Yeah, I just. Uh, well, and that's the thing. You know, full disclosure. I hate this stupid ass mask, man. Like I don't like breathing my own breath because of the beard and just my overall size. None of them fit right. I don't like them at all. But I still wear it. It's just sometimes you do stuff you don't want to do, man. Like, it is what it is. I suffer through a couple minutes, go get some groceries and come back. Yeah. Uh, and my wife can't really wear them either, so you know what she does? She stays home. Like, she just doesn't go out. And she hates that too. But, you know, sometimes in life you got to do things you don't want to do. It's a very temporary thing. You know, right. but death is permanent. You know? Right. You're not coming back from that. Um, and it's just not worth it. You know? It's you like, know go ahead. <clears throat> no, I was going to say we should spread a rumor that the, the reason that the numbers are going up is because Amazon... Is bringing stuff from China again? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's coming. It's it's, it's coming. all Jeff Bezos' fault. Everybody, stop buying stuff on yeah, Amazon. Good luck with that. <laughs> my wife is single handedly keeping him in business. Dude, my house alone. <laughs> I, when every time a package comes in that says Jing Xiao Jing, I'm thinking, I, I put that package to the side. Right. <laughs> I know they said it doesn't stay on the surfaces, yeah. but I like look at it, and go like, Ooh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I could be opening up sickness. I'm yeah. not gonna open that up. I don't want to open it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I, uh, uh, but yeah, man. I, I think that. Um, I, I think the, the theme of the day though needs to be self-soothing, man. I think that's where it lies. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I sit my. <laughs> say team. self-groping. This is self-soothing. Well, well, sometimes you got to grope to soothe. So, Touché. so Touché. you know, I, I'll 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 self-stroke, self-grope, oh, self-soothe. That's gonna self take a horrible turn. Well, I'm just saying. <clears throat> um, I know how to take care of me, Trinity. Yeah. And 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 I have a Snickers bar, and I love my naps, so yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, you um, know what I got mad at, and then the next day I was already fine because, just like oh, I, I. That's the beauty of having this brain is I forget about it the next day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Groundhog's Day. I wake up and I go, I was mad yesterday. Why was I mad? Uh, I'm not eating. Yeah. Funny. I'm, uh, that anymore. That's like my wife. She forgets everything. Except for everything I've ever done wrong, though. She never seems to forget that. Oh, they never forget no, that. Sir. But she'll forget what she just did two minutes ago, but she'll remember that time three years ago where I did this one thing. Yeah. My, my <laughs> Suddenly problem, the memory gets really good. No, my problem is I think they lie to see. Dana plays that. Right. And, and she'll bring up something from 20 years ago. So, and I'll tell her, you know, I, I don't <laughs> believe that that's actually true, that that happened. Because I see it ha I see it happening now. She'll say that I said something or did something. And I'll be like, whoa, 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 correct that in your brain right now because I don't want to hear this 20 years from now and I won't be able to defend myself because <laughs> I won't remember. It. I need to start taking notes. That's right, man. <laughs> you need to start filming everything, man. That's what it is. <clears throat> but, uh, but anyways, um, all right, man. Let's do our little wrap-up here because we're running Mike out of Mike works for Amazon? Oh, I'm sorry. Mike, you bringing in COVID. <laughs> Shame. Um, all right, let's do your uh, let's do your wrap up. Uh, for those of you who are who are new to this, uh, we're gonna do a wrap up of the official show. We'll stay on uh, here Facebook Live just for a few minutes afterwards to kind of answer some questions and uh, just keep the the party going for a little bit. Uh, but as far as the official portion, the one that's gonna show up on YouTube and different podcast things later on, uh, we're gonna go ahead and end that now. So, uh, Lou, you want to give your wrap up? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, as in regards to COVID update, here's here's the the situation. I be mindful that, that we just don't know all the facts. There's no individual that they've placed in front of us, not a federal individual, not a state or local individual that has given us uh, information that everyone can believe 100%. You may believe what you're watching. You may believe the news you're watching or the people you're watching, and that's great for you. Here's what you can do. You can do the best for whatever you feel is the best for you. But that doesn't mean that you need to go project it or get upset at other people for not buying into it the way you do. Um, we're still at the very simplistic 
uh, thing of you better like who you live with because you're still spending a lot of time with them. Try to make that as enjoyable and memorable as possible. Try to make these as, as good as possible. Do things that make you feel good. Instead of, yeah, I know it's real easy to focus on what you're not able to do right now or what you're not doing right now or, or what you can't afford to do right now, but there's so much more that if you, were, if you take yourself back to that first month that we were in this, we explored, we actually got creative and we, and we, and we enjoyed doing some new things. And here we are three months later, and now you're so frustrated. You're like, oh, I'm done doing all that. No, 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 no. You better revisit. We're not done with this yet. And, and, unfortunately, um, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be done with it anytime soon. So the real update is, is go deeper. Explore deeper. Go back to some of that stuff that you were doing early on in that first month, how much time you were really spending with your family. And when you go out there, be mindful that somebody may be upset that you're not wearing a mask. So maybe it's not just that. You know, you're don't wear don't don't not wear the mask out of protest. This is not a, a Trump Biden thing. This isn't our dysfunctional parent thing. This is if that person feels better than and if and if, and if it doesn't bother you as much, then, then wear it and then take it off when you leave that person. It's not a big deal. It's really not that big deal unless for some reason you have some other issues going on and you're asthmatic and and you, and you feel like, no, this is a health risk if I wear it. Well, then then you don't wear it. But then be very mindful that somebody might have a judgment placed upon you. The real update is that we still don't know. Everybody's pointing and in, in, in blaming. And the best you can do is eat your Snickers, take a nap, and smile at somebody and bring back the comedy. Please bring back the comedy. Just <laughs> laugh. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at everybody. It's not that big of a deal. Right on. Well said. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think a lot of that's going to – what I'm about to say is going to piggyback off of that. But uh, – First, let me remind everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you think somebody you know could get some value out of this, feel free to share it. And as always, it'll be up on all the different uh, podcasting platforms and YouTube. You can watch all the old shows at youtube.com slash Dharma Time. You can follow us both on social media. I am at the Dharma Guy. He is at the Dope Doctor. We are at WPSN99. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out at Now Matters More. And you can see what we do as far as getting people help. Um... So, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to do some three tips here. Uh, forgive me if they're, uh, if they're not perfect. I just came up with them while he was talking. But uh, <clears throat> so the three tips I've got right now is, is number one, just keep in mind it's going to be okay. Um, I think that can get lost right now. Um, we can get so caught up in the panicking of things that we kind of forget that it's going to be okay. Uh, your definition of okay might have to change or evolve, but it's going to be okay. Somehow, some way, it's going to be okay. Uh, the second thing I would say is, is, you know, as you're going through your day, try to take some common sense approaches to, to kind of maintaining civility around all of those. And what I mean by that is, like he said, uh, if, if you're going to go outside, try to wear a mask, man. You know, if you can't wear a mask, like my wife has issues with masks, uh, she sends me out to do the grocery shopping because I'm able to suffer through the mask long enough to get things done. Um, and and if, you, if you can't do that at all... Then, like, my mother orders, uh, like, Instacart or something along those lines. There's there's ways around that to where we can take necessary precautions. Because at the end of the day, none of us want to be the source of somebody else's demise. Especially over something simple that I need to go out and buy, you know, water or something like that. Um, so take some common sense approaches. Things like wash your hands. Wear a mask when appropriate. Uh, try to do the, the, the social distancing Ask yourself, what I'm getting ready to go do, is it really worth the risk? And if it is, then by all means, do your thing. If it's not worth the risk, then maybe you postpone it or, or find an alternate method. Um, and then the very last one I would say, as far as tips, and this goes for more than just COVID, this is always just a good rule to live by, um, and that is just respect those around you. Uh, truly understand that, that you know perspectives, we all have it, and yours is no more right or wrong than mine, and vice versa. Um, I can agree to disagree with somebody and move on with my day. I don't have to defriend you. I don't have to cut you out of my life. Um, I can disagree with you in a respectful manner and not judge you and not hold you your entire life accountable to that one minute thing that we disagree on. Um, it's okay to still treat somebody with respect, period. You know, I, I think I said it on Friday's show. This is going to be a longer tip here, I guess. But I said it on Friday's show uh, on the Couch Live. You know, I, I, my, my daughter at uh, 10 years old was showing me a video of a family... Um, praising and, and instigating one of their kids at this party to hit a pinata with the picture of Donald Trump on the face of it. And I had to pull my daughter to the side and say, baby, that's, that's not cool. That's not funny. You know, uh, 
would you like that if, if somebody had daddy's picture on there and they were hitting it? Because he is a dad to somebody. He's a grandfather to somebody. Uh, that's not cool. You're going to disagree with somebody without advocating physical violence against them. Tolerance still needs to be out there regardless of how, how you believe or how it differs from what I believe. So please just remember that everybody's got a perspective and it's okay to have a different perspective and it's okay to disagree with somebody. It's not okay to berate them, bully them, and make them feel less than because their perspective differs than your own. Because remember, that's only fun if you're on the winning team. If you're on the losing team, it's not so fun anymore. So uh, that's all I got for the show. We're going to stay on for just a few minutes afterwards to kind of continue to, to talk. But that sums up our, uh, our YouTube segment and everything else. So as always, now that you know better, do better. Peace. Are you still here? What are you doing? I told you, go do better.